So, good morning and good afternoon to everyone. I want to welcome you to the second session of our Erasmus Days event. I hope you all had a great morning event and want to inform you that this session also will be recorded to offer further participation. At first, I want to thank all partners within the ValueX Consortium for their great efforts on Erasmus Days. We had several big events hosted in Albania and other European countries. You can be proud of what we made out of Erasmus Days. Very great, and I'm happy to have you all here. Thank you for your efforts to all ValueX Consortium partners in Albania, in Slovenia, in Italy, and in Germany. Thank you. Now, Let's have a look at the netiquette for our online event. You maybe know it from our morning session. So please keep microphone and video muted. If you have a question, post it into the chat during the live session or use the raise hand function during question and answer sessions. Be precise in your explanations. Avoid long stories to allow further question and recognize diversity and respect everyone. I will now hand over to my colleague Alexander Klaus, who will tell you something about virtual mobility and the VCL concept at our chair. Please, Mr. Claus, it's yours. Yes, hello, good morning. My name is Alexander Claus. I am from TU Dresden, Chair of Business Information Systems, and I'm very happy to talk to you um, during the, this year's Erasmus Day. So, um, hello and welcome to from Dresden to Albania. Um, my agenda will be as following. At the beginning, I want to give a short introduction into the terms of uh, virtual mobility and virtual exchange. Then I want to talk about the design dimensions for quality assurance in our VCL programs. And then I want to give some recommendations for actions if you want to implement virtual mobility and virtual exchange in your international everyday teaching processes. So let's start it. Um, collaborative online learning settings using affordable, flexible technologies um, enable students to take part in an intercultural exchange, which is integrated into their regular home study. So they don't have to go away without having to invest additional time or money because they stay at home, they stay at their computer, they stay in their regular study program. This opens new opportunities for students who are economically, socially, or maybe also politically excluded from a physical mobility, which is normally traditionally necessary to gain such international and intercultural competences. Virtual mobility, in short, is the use of information and communication technologies, short ICT, to obtain the same same benefits as one would have with physical mobility, but without any need to travel. So the term virtual mobility focuses a bit more on cooperation between higher education institutions and the recognition of achievement. And in addition to that, we have virtual exchange, which um, focuses on the interaction and communication of geographically separated participants and there, for the term virtual exchange, the focus is more on the exchange and competence building and the interaction in small groups. Move, moving on to our already introduced VCL concept. In our VCL concept, we followed like Professor Schub and my colleagues, um, my colleague Matthias Altman already mentioned, we, we follow four main di design dimensions that we use as pivotal points to turn on and ensure the quality in our settings. Number one, our professionalized pe pedagogical support concepts. Number two, are realistic cases and working tasks. Number three is a stable and collaborative technical platform. And number four is learning analytics and in the information visualization. For the next minutes, I will have a closer look on those four main pivotal points. Number one, our professionalized pedagogical support concept. We followed the split tutor concept by Keres, um, which says that all e-tutors have two dimensions for the tutorial task. On the left hand side, we have the specialized support focusing on content. And on the right side, we have personal and group related support 
focusing on um, personal, individual and social things. On the left side, starting with the content level, the e-tutor is responsible for the clarification of content issues. He gives assistance with comprehension problems, ambiguities, misunderstandings, but he also provides um, hints and literature for the for the students and he gives guidance for learning tasks and helps the processing of the content of the task. And he also gives, fee gives feedback on learning tasks and on the use method. On the right hand side, we have the social support, the support in the organization of learning activities, the feedback on the learning behavior of the individual, of the individual or group, a clear support in case of any conflicts between um, st students or within the groups, and support in case of all learning problems of individuals or group. The fulfillment of those two dimensions is always depending on the concrete learning objective. Normally, our VCL program, uh, programs um, focus on gaining competences for collaborative work and teamwork competences. So our e tutors focus is more on the right hand side. But if you want to do a VCL, which is more focused on content and um, direct knowledge, it's also possible to have to focus on the left hand side. In our eTutor program, we enhanced the support concept over those two levels and added three more levels. Number one is the technical support. Technical support means the support in dealing with collaboration tools, choosing the right tools and support in cases of any technical problems. Second additional level is the organizational support. Our e tutors support the supervision of the timely processing of the task so that everything is handed in before the deadline. And also they help the students because in such virtual settings, they have the e tutor as a central contact person. And the last point, as our e tutors follow their groups every day, they also can support us with evaluating and assessing the group results. So we give observation sheets to our e-tutors, e which they fill in um, while the learning process. And those observation sheets help us as um, teachers to do a better and stricter assessment at the end. The next point are the realistic cases and working tasks. As you know that there are two kinds of levels um, of knowledge in higher education. First one is factual knowledge, knowing terms, knowing um, theories, knowing models. And the other one is structural knowledge, which is um, parted into declarative knowledge. Declarative knowledge is the knowledge of knowing what to do. Procedural knowledge as knowledge on knowing how to do things. And on the right hand side, um, conditional knowledge as knowing when and why to do things. So we focus on the right side, structural knowledge. Our learning objectives are very general for all VCL programs that the participants learn to analyze big complex, uh, complex tasks, to divide those big tasks into partial tasks, to identify or investigate relevant information and develop a solution to compile different views on the solution and discuss them, make a common decision for a group solution, and then at the end to present and defend their chosen solution in some way. To create such tasks, it's necessary to follow the following three characteristics. One, the task should be realistic. So it's necessary to provide a vocation-oriented knowledge to have a close connection to possible realistic job problems. And those kind of tasks are always characterized by open solutions that need an in-depth explanation. So the tasks should focus on gaining new practical usable knowledge through discussion and exchange and not on tasks that just call to say something is right or wrong. So it's more about discussion and exchanging knowledge. Next point is that the task should be collaborative so that students are able to solve them in groups and active virtual communication should be a must. And the last point is that the task should be 
very self-organized so the, that a student can do a self-determined scheduling and distribute, distribute the roles and tasks on their own. This also has an influence on the learning supporters. Our learning supporters just accompany the learners instead of leading them. When we have a quick look at the technical requirements for a platform, we need asynchronous tools that offers a structured and documented group discussion, but we also need synchronous tools like video chat or, or messenger chats to work on tasks or, and the deliverables. We also need groupware like a shared Word document or something like um, Google Docs. We need a shared file storage so everybody can access the files um, location independent. And last but not least, we need coordination tools. Personal coordination tools with personal profiles that I can introduce myself to my colleagues, but also task coordination tools like maybe a planner function, maybe a calendar function to see who is responsible for what in which time frame. To support our e tutors and our assessment. No, sono a casa, aspetta. Come va? Sei già andata? Social learning analytics are necessary. Social learning analytics focus on the semi-automated analysis of social behaviors and uh, recurring interaction and learning patterns. Um, where we get those social learning data, we use a platform that is accessible for learning analytics and while working with each other and communicating with each other, um, the participants leave data trials and we use those data trials and analyze them. Like my colleagues already introduced, right now we're using Microsoft Teams for this and our dashboards that support e-tutors and teachers look like this. At the end, I want to give some really short recommendations for actions if you plan to um, include virtual mobility and virtual exchange in your everyday teaching. Um, we've created the acronym of MOVEIT. So number one is to have a mobility preparation. Um, virtual mobility needs intensive organizational preparation and it should be ensured that the ECTS recognition is a given at all participating in institutions. Otherwise, it will increase the potential for conflicts. Number two of MOVEIT is the obligatory feedback, especially at the beginning of uh, virtual group work. Feedback is very crucial for students. A third point is the virtual collaborative platform, like I said already. It's very important to enable synchronous and asynchronous communication, transfer and communication. And as all of you know, it's very important also to, to give them a mobile access. It's highly recommended and the solutions should be as user friendly as possible. E, encouragement and support. Like I said, professional support is necessary and the students should be accompanied, accompanied but not guided. A qualification program for the e-tutors is recommended. Last two, intercultural exchange. The groups should be as heterogeneous as possible and uh, language skills. Participating um, institutions, but also be between the participating students necessary to plan time for those um, transfer processes. After this quick overview about our virtual mobility program, I want to say thank you to you and um, for any updates or news or emails, you can contact me and maybe we have time for a question. I don't know. We will. All right. Thank you. Thank you very, very much, Alexander Klaus for your interesting presentation about the virtual mobility framework. So we have seen the four regulating screws, which are very important to ensure a proper VCL and virtual mobility experience. So after this in-depth site, we will have now 
an evaluation uh, of the spring semester of experiences and challenges at Epoca University in Albania. And I therefore, I'm really happy to introduce Esmir Demas for his presentation about the spring semester experiences and challenges in Albania. Please, Esmir, you can now transfer your screen and start your presentation. And thank you very much, Alexander Claus, for your in-depth presentation. See you soon. Uh, thank you, Matis. Uh, uh, thank you to the Dresden team for making this happen. And thank you to colleagues from EPOCA and other universities that uh, uh, joined this event. Uh, well, in my short allocated time, uh, I will try to share an evaluation of a, of a survey that we conducted here at EPOCA University uh, last semester, the spring semester. So we thought that uh, as we were undergoing an situation and uh, we wanted to see for the uh, impressions and the experience that our students had regarding how Epoca University responded to the emerging COVID-19 situation uh, about the measures that the university uh, had taken um, academically speaking and admi administratively speaking. So the survey uh, was adopted from the Higher Education Data Sharing Consortium, a consortium of US universities that had developed this survey uh, for this purpose. The participation in the survey, we made sure that the participation was voluntary and all students that attended could choose not to answer any of the questions. So uh, whichever question they thought not willing to answer, they, they wouldn't just answer. The survey was online for a short period, so just for one week, because uh, that was the time before the final exams and we wanted to, to, to see what the situation was. And within this very short period, we were able to, to, to get 652 responses back which is a very good number and we think that if we, we, we had left the survey more online, we would, we would get more, uh, more feedback. What is something special that, that seems in here is that students really want to communicate with their university. They want to give their feedback and insights about this process, how to handle altogether uh, this process. So if we go into details, uh most of the students were uh, like bachelor freshman students like 42 percent and the number goes uh, decreasing as the level of studies increases uh we here at epoca we have three faculties the majority of participants in the survey was from the faculty of economics and administrative sciences which uh, for the sake of truth has the highest number of students as well in terms of gender, we see a kind of um, superiority of females uh, of about 60% of them having answered the, the, the survey as compared to about 40% of students that are uh, male students. Uh, there were some set of questions, all mostly organized as Likert scale type questions and the, the rest of the questions, they were organized as open questions where we wanted to get the real feedback comments from, from, from our students. So the first set of question asks students to indicate their level of agreement with each of the following statements regarding Epoca University. So we wanted them to give us a feedback about the different uh, group of people, let's say, that they meet at EPOCA. So first administrative staff, academic staff, assisting staff, etc. So when asked uh, overall, the administrative staff at EPOCA University has done a good job helping students adapt to the changes at the institution brought by the spread of COVID-19, how they would answer to this statement. Uh, about 65% uh, do agree that they have, that the, the administrative staff colleagues in here, which includes department coordinators, faculty administrators, registrar office, etc., they have done a good job in, uh, in providing uh, good uh, instructions and helping students to adapt to the, this uh, unexpected emerging uh, situation. Sorry, well, when it comes to the academic staff members, they have sorry. pretty much the same. Uh, uh, to, to interrupt you, uh, the slides aren't uh, switching. 
I'm sorry. We okay. just uh, see the first uh, picture of Epoca University. You may uh, check the slides. This would be great. OK, one, one more time. Sorry. No problem. What about now, Matis? Uh, if you close the uh, Teams window, second, or uh, just uh, yeah, make it a small. I saw the presentation before. What about now? Um, no, I'm still seeing the uh, Teams window. Uh, you may check out again and uh, do again um, these. No, no, not leaving uh, the screen. Uh, again. Uh, choose your presentation. Well, uh, I'm I'm actually doing that, but I don't know why it's not opening. Okay, if you're still having issues, send it by email, and I click it for you. Okay, let me try one last time. Yeah. Ah, I see it now. You can just uh, start your screen presentation. Okay. Let's see. Still not working. Uh, could you click uh, to another slide? Okay, so so maybe leave it just open, then we could see the slides. I see. What about now? Yes, great. Okay. So, uh, shall I go back? Okay, I'll just show the few slides I went through. Yeah, give a short overview. OK, so. I think we were left in here. So the first set of questions was about how our students uh, agree and sentences or statements that were meant for the different group of people that were that they uh, usually meet at Epoca University. So one set of questions was about the administrative staff, the academic staff and the assisting uh, staff like the teaching assistants or research assistants. So it seems that they have a generally uh, similar view in terms of all the group of people they meet at EPOCA. So about 65% of them, they do agree that the administrative staff has done a very good job in helping them adapt uh, to the emerging uh, situation. As well as for the academic staff, the figures are nearly the same. And for the assisting academic staff as well, the teaching assistants and the research assistants. So it seems that they they uh, they have a, a general agreement that they all these people have done a good job in helping them uh, to 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 cope with the with the challenges. Uh, we ask them whether they know whom to contact if they have a question about whatever change is happening at Epoca University as a response to this uh, emerging situation. And again, uh, generally speaking, they do have an idea 
to whom they directly have to contact and get information, even though the university was providing them continuous communication via emails or, or, or uh, web page uh, announcement. Another set of questions uh, asked for their level of satisfaction with the Poca University about certain uh, uh, activities or statements. And we asked them whether they were satisfied about the support that you are getting from Epoca University to help you transition to taking your classes online. About 55% are generally satisfied or very satisfied that Epoca University uh, with the support that they are getting from Epoca University. Nevertheless, we have a, a limited percentage of 7% that is very dissatisfied or generally dissatisfied, about 10 to 14% of them. Uh, how satisfied you are with the communication you are getting from Epoca University about the ongoing situation. Again, uh, the vast majority of about 60% of the students are satisfied with the communication that they are getting, with the continuous daily uh, updates that they, are, that they were getting. So we're talking about uh, the, the, the last semester always. The third set of questions, uh, given the changes at Epoca University caused by the spread of COVID-19, how often do you worry about the following uh, statements? Doing well in university, know that many or all of your classes are online. So how often do you worry about doing well? Academically speaking, we had a very high number of about 65% that they were often or very often worried about how doing well uh, in, such a, in such a situation. That could be from uh, having technical problems, not being able to focus in online classes or whatever problem that they would have. Uh, we wanted to see their social aspects besides the academic uh, situation of our students and we asked them how worried they were losing friendships and social connections now that classes are online. And uh, well, the answer, they seem not to be worried. Of course, it seems that the answer behind this is uh, social media. So they are using social media networks to keep in touch with their peers, with their friends thus not losing friendships and social connections. Accessing and successfully using the technology that is needed for your online classes. It seems that uh, students are worried about accessing and successfully using the technology, which gives uh, us a feedback in terms that we need to kind of provide our students technical uh, instructions about how to use the technology that they need to use in our online classes. We asked them about how worried they were about paying their bills, starting from the tuition fees or other, other uh, bills that they had to pay. And most of our students, uh, almost 60% of them, uh, or more than 60%, they seem to be uh, worried about this issue. Another question we see, which is directly related to the to, to the remote teaching or online classes was about how currently, I mean, uh, we asked them whether they had the proper resources and conditions that are necessary to continue the remote classes. This is a very important feedback for our university because it seems that 93, 92.2% of our students, they do have access to internet. So all these answers are not mutually exclusive to each other. So one student have, may have a PC as well as internet, as well as tablets. But what's important for us that the basic tools that are needed to perform uh, our classes remotely or virtually, uh, they do have the, 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 the basic uh, needed uh, tools like the PC, a laptop or a tablet or a smartphone, as well as most importantly, uh, internet access. So uh, we asked them about the instructional methods that had been used during the semester. So I have to note here that Epoca University allowed all the staff members to use their own instructional instructional methods. I mean, limited to, to, to a number of possible instructional methods, starting from Google Meet, Teams, Zoom, uh, that could be used freely for uh, from each uh, colleague in their own classes. 
and students. Uh, so this was an open question and we tried to cluster all the comments into, into some headings. 20% uh, of students uh, answer that Google Meet or Hangout had, had, had been used for their classes. 16% claim that Teams has been used, 10% Zoom. Uh, we clustered 10% uh, of students under the other category, talking about books, articles, case studies, uh, narrated PowerPoints, uh, etc. Then we asked about what they thought, uh, which of these instructional methods were best work best for them. And 29% of them claim that Google Meet worked well. 15% of them say that they did not work well. So this may be for technical reasons, for focus, uh, lack of focus reasons or different. They may not have the proper device to, to, to afford the, 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 uh, the meeting, etc. 13% claim that Microsoft Teams was the, worked the best for them. Then we asked, in general, how satisfied you are with the instructions you have received from your lecturers regarding the selected platform. And it seems that they are generally satisfied that their lecturers, their instructors, instructed them first how to use the platform that they were going to use during their classes. So the numbers in yellow are actually frequencies, so number of students that answered uh, under each of the categories. Then we asked the question, uh, which we probably all of us know the answer. We asked them where, whether they were able to focus during online classes like they did in the in-person classes. And the majority of them strongly disagree that they were not able to focus, to properly focus during the <laughs> online classes. This is a very important feedback for all colleagues uh, to work on and try to find ways out how to engage students, how to increase interactivity and make them focus more during the online classes. Thinking about the online instructional methods that work best, why do you think they were effective? So we wanted to know what was most important for our students that would make an, a method uh, work properly for them. And then we as well wanted for, from them to, if they had a specific course that they could uh, like uh, depict that this is the best course that worked well and we could take that course uh, as, a, as a best practice. And the majority of them actually did mention one, one, one course and it's in total 53 courses that were men mentioned as working properly. 10% um, of them uh, said that the method used worked well due to certain reasons like time management, the shared screen, having a quiet place to follow, the use of Excel for especially quantitative classes or exercises, etc. 7% uh, of them gave total merit to the lecturer by saying that professors have been doing uh, a great job, they have a very good approach, good instruction, etc. 5% of them uh, claim that the method, the instructional method worked best because all instructors did uh, share the recordings of the meetings of every class after the class so that they couldn't go on uh, through the lecture after the classes or to have a review before the, the midterm exam they had or the final exam that they had. And they see this as a very uh, important uh, point in making uh, a whole instructional method used in a class to be effective. Then we asked them whether they missed on campus classes. And of course, uh, we you may uh, imagine the answer. They definitely, uh, yes, they do miss on campus classes. We wanted to see how connected they were with Epoca University during this uh, very unprecedented uh, period of unknowns. And uh, the majority of them, they claim uh, uh, some or very strong connection with the university. So it seems that the university has done a good job in staying close to its students during this uh, during this period. We asked a very important question. 
we wanted to see their perception or what they thought. I mean, well, basically this is a perception. Do you intend to return up to Epoca University next fall to continue your education? So we wanted to see their current perception about something that would come after that. So about the, the fall, fall semester. It seems that 40% of them, no matter the conditions, they say that definitely we will be back. 16, 20% of them, they probably will be back, they say, but an important 18% of students, they condition coming back to Poca University or coming back to classes with the on-campus classes. On, only if on-campus classes resume, we will be back. That's what they claim. But we can see a very, very short, uh, a very, very small percentage of students saying that we will not be back. So we will have to wait, uh, to wait for two weeks more now to see what's the actual uh, uh, coming back uh, rate of students will be, but it seems that they will be back. What factor is having the biggest influence on your thoughts about whether or not to return to Epoca University next fall? 27% uh, claim that it's online classes, so we clustered it under the online classes, but actually they, they start listing quality of online classes. If if the quality is very high, we can come back. Some others would say that if we keep with online classes, we will not come back. Or some others, they would say that we cannot focus on online classes. And some others would say that it's we can come back only if online classes uh, go on. So we just wanted to see as a, as a keyword online classes. 20% explicitly mentioned COVID. And within this 20%, an important part that relates Epoca is the transportation concern. So they claim that they would have difficulties from their home to the nearest Epoca bus station or from uh, for within the bus within the bus that, that brings them to Epoca campus. What have you appreciated most about Epoca University's response? Uh, about 19% of them say that the proper and fast adaptation to online classes. And there is a 5% explicit mention only to the online classes, to the good uh, quality of online classes. So uh, we asked them whether there is anything else that they wanted to tell Epoca University about the way that Epoca has responded to the COVID-19 and the experience during the spring semester. And we have almost 350 comments and we try to cluster those comments into some keywords. 2% uh, of these comments were like, uh, there was, it was not a good experience but due to external factors uh, per se, the, the COVID situation. Uh, about 2% of them would talk about scholarships or tuition fees. Uh, another 2% of them would request e uh, finals that would be easier than the on-campus uh, classes. 2% of them would give some suggestions for uh, improvement. We just directly asked whether they had some symptoms about the COVID-19 and the vast majority of them, 93% of them, almost 93% of them claimed that they had no, uh, no uh, symptom. On a scale of one to five, how do you rate your psychological well-being? We wanted to see how psychologically uh, good well they were and it seems that actually students are actually stressed. So the majority of them are uh, from the middle towards uh, being stressed of the situation, which is not something uh, new for them. I mean, all of us uh, have been stressed during that period. We listed the most important takeaways for our internal bodies at Epoca University. I mean, starting from uh, academic colleagues, administrative staff or the administration of the university. What results from this survey is that the professionalism and relatively fast response of the, of the university has been appreciated from students. The conduct of online classes is appreciated. However, given the emergence, there is still place for improvements because everything started unexpect, unexpectedly. So both technically and pedagogically, there is still place for improvement. And this is, I think, why we are having such trainings like the, the one today. Students ask for more interaction during classes, 
So they will need to get engaged more so that the class uh, uh, is more uh, interesting for them. Students want to communicate with their university and provide their insights and feedback for the whole process. So they want to be part of the decision making uh, processes for how to, to, to cope with the situation. Students claim for difficult experience and overload, which is uh, normal because they all of us were experiencing something completely new. Technical problems during the classes were stressing, like the one we had in during this presentation. So such problems were seems to be stressing for students uh, during their classes. Students ask for online examinations. They say if we are having online classes, we should have online examinations. But if the university insists to have on campus examinations, then for sure we need to have on campus review sessions. They have problems or concerns with the transportation and uh, they seem to have to, to request for some flexibility for not losing their scholarships or some tuition fee uh, revisions and stuff like that. So thank you for your time. And I'm granting the floor to Matis. Thank you very much, Esmir, for this very detailed presentation about the perception of the spring semester of students of Ipoca University. And I also want uh, to say that also at the TU Dresden, uh, students had uh, several of these points you have mentioned and have to struggle with them. So, um, and now we want to make a direct connection to one of the points you have mentioned that uh, a lot of the students don't like or uh, don't are familiar with the online sessions. So um, our next question within uh, these uh, presentations is how to increase interactivity in online sessions. What can we do that students feel more comfortable, that there are more actions than just uh, front um, um, teaching and um, they get really into deep into the topic. But at first, thank you very much, Esmir, for your presentation. It was a great insight and hope to see you soon again. And thanks for all the participants of Rikpoka University who also joined uh, this evaluation. Also to the other members, um, very great that you're here. Now we're starting with our hands-on VCL. So at first I want to give you a short introduction. We've heard some of these uh, things before. Then uh, we will show you interactive tools, examples of these tools which you can use in your teaching without any costs or efforts. It's very easy to use. We will have a hand-on. We will then make some exercises, demonstrate. You will join these tools and have some little exercises with us together. We will make a reflection and a question and answer session. But now I want to start um, with uh, virtual mobility as my colleague Alexander Claus explained before. This is a modern ICT which enables a virtual exchange without the need to travel. Not much further into that. Um, we also had some yet yeah, design dimensions in our uh, last research which are very important to enhance the quality of online sessions. I will read them in short. You can uh, have a detailed look after the presentation on that. Um, but now I will start with the presentation. So at first we have a didactical dimension. dimension. We need active forms of learning, problem-based learning, seamless learning, peer reviews, a self-study or project-based learning. Then a realistic and authentic case, as my colleague Alexander Claus mentioned before, a concept for teacher support, then learning objectives, not just formal, but also informal learning objectives, like getting intercultural experience, how to solve the conflict within my group, besides the formal learning objectives within your maybe master's course in business administration or else. And we need an assessment which is uh, transparent, it should be formative and summative, and also maybe deploy a self-assessment uh, under the students themselves. Then we have the technical dimension. So the selection of tools in relation to the learning method, tasks and learning objectives should be made carefully. Very important is that tools should be useful, 
and the usability of tools. And no tools work without training. So that's really a crucial point to train the people, not just deploy the tools, but also offer trainings, how to use this tool, how to use it in a good way, maybe make a bad example how the tool shouldn't be used. Yeah, That's really important. Then a concept for teachers and support. So is communication possible without technical issues? Is the support, so maybe you as a teacher or the e-tutors are reachable through the desired channel of the student because the student has to send his message to you in an email, in a chat, could be a phone call, could be a video call, could also be an old-fashioned, uh, um, yeah, a mail just uh, without the E in front. So uh, that's really important to offer students several channels uh, to communicate with you, to ask questions. And you should be available, not in two weeks or one week, maybe in two days or maybe in one day or an instant answer. I know that's not possible every time, but um, it's really important to make the students feel comfortable and to make the students, um, yeah, just to feel good in this course, yeah, to not be worried. It's very important to keep this support. Remember when you're in class and you have the students, class is finished and the students are coming to you. Hey, Mr. Teacher, Mrs. Teacher, uh, I have a question. Can we talk a little? This is not happening in online classes, but you have to deploy somehow a possibility that students also could do that. So very, very important point. Then let's come to the social dimension. So interaction is so important. The creation of optimal conditions, maybe also intercultural experience in virtual mobility arrangements. And um, also you need to have some rules of interaction and get the commitment of the students. You could do that, for example, if you let the students make a group agreement in the first lesson, after your kickoff session, they come together and the first task they have is uh, to on, which, on the base of which rules they want to collaborate. Do everyone in the group wants to have a grade one or are they happy with the grade two, everyone? So these are very, um, uh, very important questions, but let the students answer this. So then the necessity of interaction. So putting students in a situation where interaction is necessary through a task design, through guidance. Yeah, you can just write uh, the task uh, write down uh, five aspects of business administration or uh, to like putting them in a situation where interaction is necessary. You could also say discuss within your group on the learning platform the five um, points of business administration, then create a PowerPoint and um, load it up to the learning platform and present it into um, a video chat session. This could be an example. So, and then the last point, motivation and intercultural competence. So it's really important. It increases with meaningful interaction. So like Asmir mentioned before, many of the students at Epoca are not satisfied with online teaching. They are maybe not motivated. So, but motivation and intercultural competence can increase with more interaction. So the first point I will show it on the next slide uh, will be to increase the interaction, but how to increase interaction. Let's see how this happens. So as we've seen the elements before, none of these elements can achieve a positive perception of virtual mobility and online teaching on its own, but in a causeway. So through case study design or task design, provision and support of tools and support of participants. The formation of a positive perception can only be supported, but not created. And how to support? You see it here. We need to create optimal conditions in the before mentioned didactical dimension, in the technical dimension and in the social dimension. And with these optimal conditions, we need to bring the students into a situation where communication is necessary. The rest works on its own. 
you have increased interaction on the platform. People are talking with each other. People are connecting. There are networking issues, maybe talking about tasks, about the next day or even an, a virtual uh, evening uh, these days. You know, it's hard to see each other. Uh, I don't know what's like in Albania, but here it's very restricted right now and even getting um, shorter. But these are the important points. So now, um, to just get you into a situation like we were in spring semester, I have to build up a little story which I will start now with the next slide. So remember this one, yeah? Um, we are in the VCL workshop from the morning session. You're at the end of your virtual phase of the VCL and you find yourself in the actual situation of COVID-19. Teaching and presence is not possible, but you have to hold your workshops which were planned in presence so what to do? The questions arise. How do I design the workshop that was actually intended to apply the acquired knowledge? How do I bring interactivity into a virtual environment and encourage the participants of my classes to become more involved and motivated? So let's see. Um, this is the workshop we're looking at. And um, now you see the original agenda or planning of these workshops, yeah? You have a welcoming and real people come into the classroom, talk to you, have a tool presentation. You know, it's a lesson about tools. So uh, you have your PowerPoint at your Beamer, people sitting in the class, watching you, maybe leaning back, you know? Um, and after that presentation, you may want to make a brainstorm how to increase in interactivity in online classes. You do it on the blackboard, smart board as usual. And um, after that, you maybe make a debate, yeah, really getting into deep, let the students in discuss um, with a flip chart. Everyone gets a flip chart paper, some uh, um, some thing to write. And um, yeah, then you maybe make a quiz asking questions. People are raising their arms. Hey, I know the answer. Ah, that's great. Um, but how should this happen in online classes? Yeah, and maybe at the end you want to make a short evaluation, you know, handing out those evaluation papers you have um, at the end of the semester, or maybe you just want to know how your class has been evaluated. And that's also, yeah, a little bit difficult. But um, now I want to show you how we convert this offline analog class into a pure online class and using tools which are available which are to a certain amount free and which can be used to just do these things so like a brainstorming a debating reflection evaluation so let's start and get into deep the first tool i want to present you is tricider so tricider is um, yeah a really really easy tool um, yeah, we would recommend Tricider um, to facilitate brainstorming and decision making. Yeah, it enables groups and institutions to collect ideas, support them with arguments and finally vote on them. And use cases could be problem oriented group work, making decisions about activities or products in a project work. It's free of cost and no registration is necessary. We will try it out later. Here's a short glimpse on the Tricider question. Uh, we will maybe investigate later. But um, what else do we have? So Slido um, is like an online conference management system with a lot of functions. Some of them are free to use and very easy to use. My favorite, for example, is the World Cloud. We will try it out later. Um, but let me just talk a little bit about the functions. So Slido enables more interaction in lectures. Yeah, organizers can receive immediate feedback or ask questions via live chat and live survey. The audience has opportunity to ask questions and rate and comment on them. So use cases could be interactive question answer during lessons, a real time voting, a live quiz, an event analysis or a brainstorming also. Its basic version is also free of cost, but registration is necessary for bigger events. But you also could use some of their quick features, which are not uh, necessary to register for. So here you can see a word cloud. 
created with Slido. Um, next, maybe some of them, uh, some of you know it, uh, it's Kahoot. So Kahoot is a powerful quiz tool. Um, you only, you not only have a quiz, but uh, you also have a ranking and points, points for the right and for the fastest answers. Up to 50 participants can join a free Kahoot. So it's also a free option, um, yeah, to make, for example, a reflection and to gamify it a little more, make a competition out of it, let the students uh, engage at this point because they want to win, because at the end there is a winner uh, of this quiz, like first place, second place, third place, um, but you will experience that later in the session. So functions of Kahoot are creation of quiz questions, discussions, maybe surveys, the use cases could be used for feedback or the control of learning success. Basic, uh, basic version is free and registration is required for the creation, but not for the people who participate in the quizzes. Here you can see um, a short uh, example how it works. Remember, this is not the pin for joining the Kahoot. The pin will be posted to the chat when the exercise starts. Here you can see another uh, screenshot of Kahoot where a question is displayed, um, but we will uh, turn on and try it out later. So uh, I don't want to uh, bother you now. So next point, I would really recommend that. Uh, first point, uh, Kialo has two versions. Um, the first one is Kialo and the second one is Kialo minus Edu. And uh, the Kialo minus Edu version is especially for educators. The business version has a pricing, the Edu version not. And it's a very, very powerful tool for deep discussions and for debating. You can add pro and contra arguments, weigh them and vote for them. Even in bigger classes, this is possible. It's very powerful, very deep, but it also has a lot of functions. This is not an easygoing thing uh, which you apply in five minutes, but it offers several possibilities. I give you an example. You could let your students write a Kialo instead of an essay, for example, and they hand in this Kialo. They can collaboratively in an online class um, join this. It's also asynchronous discussions possible with these tools. And uh, you can also vote arguments, comment on arguments. I will show you a video later on how it works, okay? And, um, but really take that into account. They have a real big tutorial base and for educators it's totally free. So it's, um, yeah, just uh, see a short uh, basic structure of a Kialo debate, but this is only a glimpse of uh, what it could do. Next thing, you maybe know it, uh, Microsoft Forms for evaluation. Um, we also used it within this session. Um, sometimes it's free with limited functions, depends a little on the country and what your Office 365 um, yeah, license may is. Uh, it's very easy to use. It's even live possible. We will try it out later and use it for the evaluation of the event. And um, you can uh, make a live evaluation of single questions. Even right now we could do it. And uh, yeah, it's uh, for use cases like the evaluation of a course or a vote or poll in events. Um, yeah, and regarding the costs, it's integrated in Office 365 solutions, but uh, check your local licensor uh, how maybe. There's also a free version where registration is necessary with a limited function, but um, check it out at your local licensor how it works. Okay, here's also a example of um, the forms uh, pictures so you can share the link and uh, like here select if anyone can respond or just people into your organization can open the link it's super easy question editing anyone can use it just you know here click on the plus make a choice if it's a choice question a text or a rating enter the question enter the answers really fast takes me 10 minutes and it's fine so and there are several types like choice text rating uh, for question types, also dates and other deeper functions are hiding on this little button here. So, but now um, I've talked so much about the tools and you're just listening. So um, I want to explain you 
how Tricider works. Uh, let's just have a look. I will explain it to you. I will then show the exercise and we will see what happens. Just uh, join. Um, we, are, we are really a lot of people today and um, I just want to say new ideas try more to vote and comment on the pros and cons. I think it is more suitable for like 30 people. Now we are like 70 in the chat and um, yeah, just let's do it. I've prepared something. So um, how is, does TriSider works? Just go to TriSider.com, enter your question. Okay, first step. Second step, this would be where you come into play. Um, add your idea, add your name if you want to, and the third step, vote for the argument. So um, you can vote like when you have a look with this uh, plus or minus, yeah, if you are pro or contra, the argument, and you also can vote for the best argument or for what you appreciate the most. And now I've talked enough, let's have a look. I will switch over one second. So the question for this event, my colleague Anna Leixenring will now uh, post the link to join the uh, Tricider uh, question to the chat here. And uh, we will have a look um, at this question. What do you think is the biggest challenge in terms of e-learning during the COVID-19 pandemic? So I will make the first thing. So add an idea, it's like, um, yeah, increasing interactivity in online classes. Oh, I add my name, Matis, save it, saying, okay, this is the first idea. I may also copy the link. So please click on the link provided in the chat come in and uh, yeah, post your question, um, maybe vote. And the question is, what do you think is the biggest challenges, challenge in terms of e-learning during the COVID-19 pandemic? Vote afterwards for your favorite idea. So just click on the link in the chat box, join, the discussion and add your arguments. We will give you some minutes to complete and then we'll have a look at the exercise. Oh, so we have uh, some more ideas here like motivation or ensure a meaningful engagement of students. I really like that. I think I vote for that one. So yeah, more ideas and um, votes are welcome. I just refresh to see, oh, we have some new. Um, ensure a meaningful engagement of students or motivation. So also empathy with teaching with care and proper pedagogical technical competences in e-learning, I, I both like them. So uh, maybe you have more ideas and uh, so feel free to write, write them, vote for your favorite idea and we will have maybe some uh, favorites at the end. So great, we have some more arguments here. So we were pushed and we have to survive, is this good? Yeah. It's uh, really a good question. So um, I could add an argument to this by Nada and said, yeah, um, I agree to that. Really pushed. Can add my name here. So, and we really have arguments. You can vote for uh, several things. Just remember to refresh to see more uh, voting, right? And um, we see, okay, the highest vote goes to ensure a meaningful engagement of students. 
That's very interesting. And we have another comment here. If a university uses multiple platforms, this may be confusing to students. Using one platform across the campus may be easier. Yeah, that's right. One platform may be easier, maybe adding some tools. But uh, if you uh, have another opinion to that, feel free to add an argument to this one. I will refresh for a second time. So I really see we have a favorite here with six votes uh, with ensure a meaningful engagement of students. Very interesting. Um, I will wait maybe one minute or 30 seconds for the last people. Um, if you need more time, maybe coming uh, online and uh, joining the discussion, please write it in a chat here and we will wait some more. Let's have a look. Seven votes for ensure a meaningful engagement of students. So this is really be the favorite. I think this is enough to demonstrate what you can do with a tri -sider. So um, just to show you, uh, it's so easy. Um, I will make a new one. So um, yeah, what is the best food? I click go. So I click share, click on the link, and we have our next try cider. I could share with you and we could discuss now about the best food. You see it's really easy in seconds. Uh, you can uh, make these try ciders shared with your students and um, yeah, have just a great experience. And I would think for the question, what do you think is the biggest challenge in terms of healing dur during the COVID-19 pandemic? Um, the winner is, ensure a meaningful engagement of students. Very interesting. I think most of us um, would agree. No, most of us agreed to that. I thank you very much for the participation in that one. And um, it was a very interesting question. And now I would try and a little bit to come down, um, make an, another easy exercise. So we were here at Tricider and now uh, we already had uh, these examples. I will now show you. So we had a brainstorm just uh, to conclude with Brian, uh, with Tricider, brainstorm voted for the best ideas and had our outcome. But hmm, I forgot one thing, sorry for that. Let's make a screenshot of the outcome to save it for the next students. So, um, and to show you, I will just uh, post this screenshot into our chat here um, if it lets me no won't one second okay and then we will continue with the next exercise okay let's have a look at slido so um, Slido, I mentioned, is also a possibility like a conference management system. It has, has very much functions which you could use uh, for um, yeah, making more interactivity and anything, but it's a little, a little bit hard and a little bit, um, yeah, you need time and maybe also to sign up for a plan. But uh, Slido has also some very quick features which are free to use. And uh, a final thing, or what, what I really like is the work cloud feature. So you just enter you, the idea, see the most frequent ideas highlighted, make a screenshot to save the results. And I would say, let's try it out. Um, so I will move to Slido again. It's here. So, and I will show you how fast it goes. So I launch a quick event. This is launched, maybe takes a second. So I create a new poll, making a word cloud, call it um, which town do, um, or yeah, from which town did you join the meeting? Question mark. So as everyone comes from one town, I won't allow multiple uh, answers and launch the thing. So 
I would now just um, recommend to take your smartphone and scan the QR code, yeah, or join at slider.com with the code you see there, and um, then just add the town where you're coming from or where you're joining from. So, for example, right, I'm joining from Dresden. So I write Dresden. Let's see. We have a Tirana here. Great. Two answers right now. Feel free to answer. Just take your smartphone, scan the QR code or join. And you see, oh, we have more answers. Duress is here. Rome. Great. So much people from Tirana. Beirut. Welcome. Hello to Beirut. Great. Also, Dresden. Duress is getting bigger. Okay. Elbasan, also here. Hello to Elbasan. Ah, Kashar is coming. Hello to Kashar. And Tiran and Duras are growing bigger. So, <laughs> yeah, feel free to scan the QR code jo or join at Slido if you don't, uh, if you're not able to scan. Uh, it's very easy. Just um, uh, enter your answer, and uh, we will see where all the participants come from. So, yeah, feel free and I will wait uh, 30 more seconds to uh, all the, for all the participants and um, to act here. Great, Skodra, hello to Skodra. So 17 answers, 18. Great. Yeah, so last chance, scan the QR code, enter the town you're coming from, you're where, from where you joined the meeting, um, to just get an overview where all the people come from. And we see, oh, the biggest one is Tirana right now. Yeah. Um, then Dores, place two, and from all the other towns. Thank you very much for uh, joining at this, for entering your town. Great opportunity. So um, this is only one function of, of Slido. There are more, but uh, this feature, the Word Cloud feature is free to use. It's so fast. You even uh, uh, could do it ad hoc if you have a question with your students and just want to know what they think about it. And you could use it to produce a Word Cloud on your Beamer or as I do it when I um, just uh, share my screen with you. So I would now come to an end with uh, the Slido presentation. I thank all the participants here to enter their answers and I would uh, suggest to move on to the next tool. Thank you very much for participating. I hope you liked Slido and I will go on now to the next point. And for that, I will share another screen. So let's have a look at Kialo. You now have the chance a little bit to come down. Um, I will show you a video because Kialo is very deep and it's it wouldn't be possible to 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 explain all functions and a good yeah overview of Kialo within the session. So I just uh, show the video how Kialo works and uh, afterwards, uh, yeah, you can ask uh, questions or uh, go into deep and uh, yeah, we will see how uh, Kialo works. Just give me a second. I need to um, reactivate the sound for you. Second, got it. Okay, please give me a sign if you cannot hear it. So let's have a look. To Kialo, the only platform designed specifically for rational debates. Here on Kialo, you can debate anything, big or small, from the hottest political topics to important company decisions. Kialo was designed to keep discussion balanced with clear, concise arguments from both sides. That makes it easy to weigh the pros and cons 
without all that editorial noise. Kiala's unique structure allows you to dive as deep into a debate as you want. Just click on an argument and all the supporting and opposing points are displayed clearly so you can have small targeted debates or wide-ranging discussions with hundreds of arguments, all without losing sight of the main issue. The arguments are arranged according to their impact, so the strongest arguments, as judged by users, appear at the top. If you want to add a new argument, just click the plus. It's easy. Everything is kept neatly organized so you can quickly understand a debate even when you join later because instead of having to make sense of a giant email chain or a forum thread, you can pop in and see the best arguments for both sides. You can browse hundreds of active discussions or create your own. And then start debating with your colleagues, your friends or the whole world. Only invited users can approve suggested arguments, so it won't get overtaken by trolls. With Kialo, you can easily visualize every aspect of a complex debate, so you can be more thorough and more thoughtful about the issues that matter to you and the world. Empowering reason. Kialo. So, one more application Welcome thing. Welcome to Kialo, the only platform designed specifically for rational debates. Every debate on Kialo starts with a thesis. This is the issue being discussed. What follows are the claims. On one side, those that support the thesis, and on the other, those that oppose it. To create a claim, click one of these icons. Just make sure your claim is clear, concise, and limited to one point. You can move a claim anywhere in a debate, depending on where it fits best. Just drag it to the clipboard or use the copy move option in the claim menu. To comment, click the comments icon and add your comment below. If you spot a claim that you think requires clarification, you can flag it accordingly and the author will be notified. When someone creates, changes, or comments on a claim, you'll see these little blue icons in the corner. To see a chronological list of all activity, open the notifications panel here. Those are the basics of debating on Kialo. Thanks for watching. Okay, so we had some time to relax without interaction. It was maybe a little bit much. Uh, so let's get back to our presentation we start from here and uh, yeah you've now Kialo can do and uh, see yeah what you may could do with it so it's a powerful and complex tool for in my opinion and uh, of my colleagues for five to thirty students about that and um, it's for debating online and a real cool thing is um, it could replace essays so if you let your students write an essay, why not in Kialo? They really could uh, imagine and build up all those branches and export it. It could replace them. You can make public discussions like at your university about uh, new plans, new thoughts, but also private discussions and they're asynchronous. So if you host or start a Kialo debate, um, you don't have to stay online the whole time. It's like you can add within weeks more arguments, more thoughts, or you can complete it in one online session. So it's up to you. And yeah, um, maybe you try it. Um, I really would recommend uh, to do such as uh, students want to interact more. But now we have talked so much about increasing interactivity, increasing motivation of students about VCL today. And um, I think it's time for a reflection. If you kept something that we tried to teach you today or try to yeah, just uh, inform you about and hmm, how do how to do this reflection online. So we've decided for Kahoot. So um, my colleague Anna Leixenring will now uh, prepare 
uh, the Kahoot for you and will share the screen after I have uh, described uh, the rules or the how to enter Kahoot. So for making our reflection, I want all participants, please take out your smartphone um, and um, enter the website kahoot.it. We really recommend to use the smartphone as you have um, to watch uh, the shared screen. Uh, my colleague Anna will share because there are the questions and the answers displayed and on your smartphone you will have four buttons or two to pick the right answer. After that, if you entered Kahoot IT, um, enter the enter the uh, play button in the upper right and uh, watch the shared screen to see the question and answer on your device. At the end, the best players are shown uh, at the ranking. And now I would like to say, have fun. My colleague Anna is now um, starting the quiz. We're doing a classic mode and uh, sh then we can share the pin to um, to join the quiz. We will wait until every participant has arrived, so no worries, we will wait for two minutes. Um, go to, I will write it in the chat, kahoot.it or oh, wait as a link. And then you enter the game pin 569 four, six, nine, two. Yeah, so I will also join the game. Give me a second, take your time to join and would be great to have some people here playing. It's really, it's not uh, hard, it's just some easy questions. It's a reflection of today's um, contents. Just keep in mind Kahoot is limited in the free version to 50 participants. So if they're full, we have to start. But uh, right now there are more than enough places. So feel free to join, take your smartphone, go to kahoot.it, join the game, and we will start in a few seconds, minutes. Yeah, let's wait some 30 second, seconds, one minute for everyone to join. Um, we have 19 participants live right now. Marcida is online. Hello to Marcida and uh, Mike is online. MDD, Mosa, Timothy, Arkid, Hakan, Miriam, Christina, Helionia, Claudia, Esmir, Mario, Ariana, Inia, Anna, Igli, and number one. So we are 20 participants right now. Um, I would wait another minute for everyone to join. Just pick your smartphone, go to kahoot.it. I've posted the link in the chat. Enter the game pin you're seeing on your screen and wait until the game starts. So 22 players right now. Okay, maybe 30 seconds, then we'll start. 23, that's great. So anyone has problems joining, please write it in the chat or if anything else is not working, give us a sign. Uh, we will wait for you. 24, Sam, hello. And we will start really, really soon. 25, 26, 27. Do we get 30? Come on, join the game. We get 30, I'm sure. Fab is coming, number 28. So two more people joining the game. Oh no, who left? Okay, I think we're complete. Anna, would you launch? Oh no, we're not. Okay, 10 seconds. Okay, I count. And then we'll start. So it's from 10, 9, 8, 6. Oh, I forgot 7. So 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Do we get 30? 
Okay, let's go. Value X quiz. So question one, what does VCL stand for? You have 30 seconds to put an answer. We have eight answers out of 29. Pick an answer. 50 seconds left. Nineteen answers, twenty-one. Okay, that's it. You got the right answer. It's virtual collaborative learning. So let's see. Second question. Um, we heard that in the uh, end of the afternoon session or at the first sessions, what are the four design dimensions of VCL? Five seconds left, pick your answer. Seventeen people got it right. Oh, I thought it was tumbler, laundry room, clothes spine and washing line. So I'm wrong. Uh, I get no points and all the other 17 people get the points. Next, please. Timothy is on first place and as mirror behind on second place. True or false? Pick an answer. Everyone got it right. Timothy still on first place, then Esmir and Newton two. Which of these tools can be used for professional debating in an online session? Ten seconds left. Eighteen had the right answer. Kialo is a tool which can be used for professional debating in online learning. Timothy still on first place. Inea is coming to play three. Next question. Which of these tools can be used for a reflection at the end of the lesson? Okay, most of you pick Kahoot. This seems to be the right answer. Let's see who will be on first place. Still Timothy? No, it's Esmir and Newton coming to place two, Inia on place three. So, true or false? Words clouds can be made with Slido. OK, 16 got the Slido thing. Great. So I think we have one or two more questions. Let's see what the ranking says. Esmir still on place one, followed by Sam and Inia M. Uh, really, really exciting.
So question is, virtual mobility makes use of which technologies? Oh, you know that. ACE, ICT, absolutely right. So let's see the ranking again. Oh, this is going to be hard. So we're coming to the last question to close our reflection. Value X stands for. See, 18 people got it right. Value X stands for Virtual Albanian European Universities Exchange. So it's getting really exciting. This is the last question. Let's see who won. Place three, Anna. Congratulations. Place two, Enya. And place one of the Value X quiz is Esmir. Congratulations. Great recap. Thank you very much, Anna, for uh, showing. Yeah, Esmir, you wanted to say something. What's the price I get? Oh, uh, knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> the knowledge about the great game. No, uh, maybe I, I find a, a nice uh, price for you afterwards, but <laughs> we really discussed about that. But good idea. Uh, somehow uh, we need a price, maybe. I will discuss with my colleagues what we could do. But thank you all for uh, participating. I will now um, recap the screen and uh, we're almost finished. Um, just let me conclude, introduce and show you the last points uh, we are doing right now. So just a second, um, let me capture the screen. And we've seen Kahoot as a powerful tool to uh, make uh, reflections. And um, remember, free version is limited to 50 participants. First come, first serve, or you have a little seminar. Um, so that's it. I'll give you an overview. So we use TriCider for brainstorming, Slido for our word cloud, Kahoot for the reflection of our session, uh, Kialo, maybe for de debating if we have more time. But what's left? An evaluation. Did you like what you see? So. Let's do it. Um, point six of the agenda, evaluation of the course. I've created a short forms, um, Microsoft forms, just take time, some minutes uh, to complete the form. You can uh, use the QR code and open it with your smartphone. You can use the link, open it on your PC as you like. Uh, it would be very nice to hear from you if you like the event or not, what you did like, what you did not like. Feel free at comments. It's a very short evaluation, I think two, one, two minutes and you're through. And uh, yeah, we will just uh, let the image here and wait for you to evaluate. And um, yeah, take your time. So just to show you, we can do the thing live. Let's have a look at this one. So oh, we still have, so you can see the form here and live responses. So we have some responses here from universities, we can have a look at it live. 
Um, for the questions, can see how the rating is, if you liked it or not, can refresh it. Um, so, Okay, whereas you take your time to uh, complete the form, just feel free. You can do it later or now or while I while I am talking. Um, just the information, as you see, we have really a live evaluation. Um, I can see where you come from, uh, as I ask. I can see the ratings. Did you like it or not? I then see, oh, okay, the organization of the event met my expectations is like uh, the worst rating it's very good uh, but uh, it's like um, so we could ask um, people for the next event um, maybe beforehand what are your expectations to find out what's happening or um, you could really ask uh, live uh, within your event or even create a very short uh, next a form and post it to the people where they can uh, say anonymously, uh, hey, these were my expectations, they were not met or anything like that. So you really can quickly react. People feel motivated because they're anonymous, can say, oh, I really don't like this. You know, always students and professors are, um, yeah, maybe a bit shy uh, to tell what not what's not working. And this is me. A good opportunity. So I let this open. You can uh, conclude here and we'll show my very, very, very last slide. Um, so here's QR code again. Just to make a short, short recap, um, the original planning of the workshop you've seen. So we welcomed you through Teams and made the theoretical background, had our brainstorming with Tricider made a word cloud with Slido, could have debated with Kialo, reflected on the learned content with Kahoot, and let the students or participants evaluate the event with Microsoft Forms. That's it from my side. If you have any questions, I will now um, turn off uh, and we can just have a question and answer session talking um, you can find us uh, on the blog uh, lsvim.wordpress.com or tu-treason.de. Um, also find ValueX on valuex.value-x.eu or uh, find ValueX also on LinkedIn. Here are the people who worked for this second uh, session. Uh, thank you, Professor Schaub. Thank you, Alexander Klaus. And thank you very much, Anna. 
likes and ring for joining and supporting this event. It was very great to have you here. Also, thank you very much, Esmir, for your presentation um, about the Epoca University outcome of the spring semester. Very, very nice. I thank all the people who came here, who took the time to watch this, to took take the Friday, having a look what we may could offer. And um, it is really great to have you all here. So much people in one event for Value X. That's really a premiere. And um, I'm just glad and happy to have you all seen. So thank you very much. And um, who has questions, just say we can talk. And for everyone else, have a nice afternoon. Thank you. So if you have questions, just feel free to ask, activate your camera, microphone and ask. If not, it's not uh, the thing. We can uh, stay in contact, check out LinkedIn, check out my email. You can find it also on value-x.eu. Uh, value and um, thank you. Thank you. Oh, we have an open question here. Sorry for that. I just saw it. So um, let me read it. What do you think about the changes on syllabus in order to be adjustable to online learning? This year we used face-to-face -face learning programs for online learning. So uh, this really depends on the syllabus. Um, you may could also use your, I would say, classical uh, syllabus you have and just adjust your online activities to that. So in my opinion, we also had a face-to-face -face, um, session today because we see each other, we're interacting with each other. Uh, we're just uh, using some other materials instead of papers. So we're using our screens or, or smartphones. But um, from my opinion, there has to be no change. If you want to get uh, into discussion, feel free. Uh, um, to post uh, next arguments um, would be great.
I may stop the recording.